Hi, I'm Troy, and welcome back to another On the Road video brought to you by ApplianceVideo.com. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for proper voltage. Today we're going to look at installing an over-the-range microwave. When I'm installing the microwave, I'll do my best to explain to you what you should be doing with what you have and walk you through the, the entire process from prepping the microwave to prepping the installation to actually installing the microwave. So on the microwave, before we were to install it, I'm gonna explain a couple things. Uh, you have the blower here, which is the vent for the microwave. Uh, basically, when you have your stove on and you push the, the vent button, you hear a blower come on. It's sucking air from the bottom of the microwave, which is from your stove, and then this is diverting it either up, which this one is set up for, through a vent out of your house, or it can be set up where you move this blower and tilt it and turn it a different way to vent out through the front of the microwave, which is gonna vent just into your home. But you wanna make sure you set up the right way because that is important for when you're cooking to remove moisture from the microwave as to not damage the unit. So you also have a mounting bracket that goes along the bottom. This is your mounting bracket that goes along the bottom. You have two hanging tabs on this one, and if you were to look on the underside of the microwave, you'll see two holes underneath, which are where these tabs hook into, and that's what holds your microwave up. So we're gonna mount this part on the wall, and then the microwave will hang from here, and we have two screws, or two holes at the top, in which the mounting lag screws go into to hold it up tight to the actual cabinet. So now what we have to do on this one, since it was previously installed, this one is set up to vent up through a vent in your cabinet. Some houses have them, some houses do not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this and put it in the proper position to vent out of the microwave through the front, not through the ceiling. In order to do that, we have to remove this plate to start with. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to reposition the blower. Being previously installed, this one is set up to vent out through a vent through the cabinet to go out of the house. This installation is going to be for venting through the front of the microwave back into the kitchen, but it still is removing the moisture and the hot air and the steam from the actual microwave and dissipating it through the room. When you get the microwave fresh out the box, it most likely is going to be set up to vent out into the house, not to vent through the ceiling. So this is just gonna show you what it's gonna look like both ways. Open ports on the top where you see the fan blades is venting out of the house. When I switch it around, I'll show you what it looks like to vent back into the house. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this bracket. Start off by taking the two screws out. There's typically two, one on each side. You can remove the two screws. With the two screws removed, this plate should just fold right off. You can set it aside. Now that that is out, the blower doesn't just lift right out. We have blower screws right here into the middle. So what we're gonna do is remove those two screws Once those two screws are loose, it should just loosen up and come out. Once you can lift it up, you can just set it down. You'll notice that there is a harness. This harness is what supplies the power to the blower. We're gonna unplug it. With that unplugged and the blower in hand, what you can see is that it has the vents where the air comes through. We were installed this way to blow up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate it so it's blowing forward and coming back 
into the microwave through the blower ports and venting out the front. So what we're gonna do, is you can set it back down, gonna re-plug it in. The plug only goes in one way, so you'll be, you'll be fine there. Once you got it plugged back in, position it, slide it back down into place. Once it's slid back down in place, we have to tighten these two screws back up, replace the cover at the top, and I'm actually gonna take an extra screw that I have because this one is missing a screw in the back, and I'm just gonna put one in there because it should have one there to hold this housing in place a little more securely. So put that in place. We're gonna tighten these screws back down. If like mine, they come out of their spot, you may have to fish them back out. But they go right back in. You can screw them in, tighten it down. Now the blower is re-secured in place. It's not gonna come out. It's tight down where it's supposed to go. We're gonna reinstall the cover. These holes are okay. They're basically irrelevant now because this vent right here coming through and up does nothing. The blower is now pushing air back out of the front of the unit. So this cover, it's got two tabs. They go in the two notches in the back. Set them back in place. Set that back down. With that back down in place, we can attach our screws again to mount this back in position. Once that is back in position, you'll notice that these holes right here, when we had it installed the other way, it was blowing up. What you have is the diverter that I had pointed out before. This diverter door opens and closes, just like a dryer vent or any kind of vent cover. When air is being pushed through, it pushes open and allows the air to come in. When it's off, it closes. Your vent going out of your house may or may not have a damper door on it. This helps to keep the cold air or outside air from coming back in. If this was a vent through the cabinet, this piece would slide in here in these tabs, come down, and you would then attach it with a screw, which comes with your mounting hardware, into position. We don't need it for this one because we're not venting up, we're venting forward. So we're gonna remove, remove this, we don't need it, we're gonna set it aside. I would recommend if you're the homeowner to hold on to it in case you decide to put a vent in, or if you're a technician or installer doing this for a customer, please be sure to leave it with the customer when you're done. So out of my drill bit set that I have, the largest I have is a half inch drill bit. So this half inch bit is just slightly smaller than this. When I put them together, it's slightly smaller, not the same size. So I'm gonna drill my holes, and then for these two, I'll just kind of angle my drill bit a little bit so I can ream it out a little bit more, and then I'm gonna mount my plate up to the wall. I'm gonna drill my holes. And now with the hole drilled, I'm just gonna ream it out a little bit more. So I reamed that out a little bit more on both sides. You'll notice I got some mess going on. Depending on where you're at, you're gonna wanna clean it up or lay something down to cover it or just make sure you have your shop vac to clean it up. If you're the homeowner, just know you're gonna have a little bit of cleanup afterwards. So we have those in place. Now what we have to do is we have to take our mounting plate. The mounting plate, you have to prepare it before you can actually put it in the wall. You're gonna wanna take one of your bolts, remember which hole you're putting it in. Once you remember where you're putting it in, you put it through with that one being in there. Take and secure the back side of this. Oh, sorry. So you're gonna take Put your bolt through and secure the lag to the back side and just get it on there. It can be tightened down a little bit because you're gonna have to 
push it through, and it's gonna squeeze. You're gonna push it through and it's gonna expand and then you're gonna tighten it down. We're gonna take and put the bolt through again. Put the bolt through. You can now attach to the back side of it. Now we have them both on there and attached. Now we're gonna take and mount and push them through the holes in the wall. So you're gonna take your bracket, just pick a side. So once you pick your side, squeeze it down so it's closed. Get it positioned to go in. This one, I didn't really make the hole big enough for this one. So you can either work it a little bit and it'll force itself in because it's only drywall. It'll break its way through. Get that one started. Once it's started, you can actually push it in there. That's fine. And you come to the other side and do the same thing. This one I made the hole a little bit larger, so I should be able to work it in there pretty easily. Once it's in there, you push them in there. Now they're both in. They're not tight. If you take your drill and start putting it on there and just cranking it away at high speed, if you stop that back part, this piece right here, when you start spinning it and you stop the drill bit, it's gonna keep spinning. And what you're gonna effectively do is loosen it back off the bolt. So what I'll do is I'll just take the bolt, I'll pull it tight so it's against the wall, and then I'll by hand tighten it down for the most part to get it down there to where it's not gonna be able to spin freely. And if it does spin freely, it's gonna have enough of the bolt sticking out the back that it should not come sliding back off. All right, so with that like that, you can grab a screwdriver or your drill and just tighten them down. Tighten this one down to where it's fairly tight. I'm gonna lift my mounting plate back up to where it goes. So now you can see I marked back with my stud holes. I'm gonna go ahead and attach my stud bolts. Go ahead and get it started. So now we have it actually mounted in place. We're still level. Now we're gonna tighten these down the rest of the way. Now we've got them in place, all four. Our mounting bracket is secure in place. Not gonna go anywhere. Now we're gonna go ahead and drill our upper screw holes for the actual hanging bracket or hanging bolts that go through. Basically look the same as the ones that went in here for this style. Some of them have a bigger head, some of them look just like this. So what we're gonna do is it comes with a washer. So what you're gonna have is the bolt, washer's gonna go through, it's gonna go through your cabinet, and your microwave's gonna tighten up here. This washer allows for you to be able to drill a larger size hole so that it can hang from it. Okay, so we're gonna drill our holes, but just, I always pause here because I don't wanna drill more than the hole that I need. So if we look, we have this hole, which is your left side looking at the cabinet, is the closest to the wall. The right side, looking at it, is the furthest away from the wall. So I find my marking, get my drill bit set and positioned, and I'm gonna go ahead and drill my hole. Once that hole's drilled, we're gonna move over 
and drill the other hole for the other side. Now, second hole, find your marking, find your spot, and drill. Once you've got the holes drilled, you can go ahead and clean up your spots. Once they're cleaned up, what we didn't do and we're gonna do now is we're going to also drill a hole for the power cord to go through up into your cabinet. Now, we've already done the measurements. I've got it marked where it goes. You're going to need a larger, uh, uh, a larger style bit to be able to drill this hole. Um, this one is basically for um, drilling a doorknob. So we're gonna use this one to get it drilled and I'm gonna run it right through where I have my marking at. We're gonna go ahead and mount the microwave. Little side note on mounting the microwave. You typically will use two people. That's for your safety sake and for the uh, appliance's safety sake. You don't wanna drop it or damage anything. If you do find yourself in a pinch and you're doing it by yourself, I would recommend putting some sort of cushion or padding on your range if there's one below it or waiting and having a second person help you. In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and do it myself and put it up and I'll show you how I do it by myself. So now I'm gonna pick the microwave up and set it in position. As you're doing so, make sure you are cautious of the edges of your cabinets. I will go and put it in one side slightly at first, bring my other side up and in. Once it's in place, I'll slide back. I feel my microwave hit the bracket. I know that I'm high on it, so I'm gonna come a little bit down and I'm low against it, so go back up. I found my spot. I can tilt it up and hold it. I positioned into my bracket, so now it's holding itself in place. It's holding itself in place. I'm now just gonna hold it from tipping. I can take my power cord, feed it back up through the hole. Second person is handy here as well to be able to grab it and pull it through for you. I'm gonna pull that through. And as I pull it through, I'm gonna push up on the microwave. So the microwave goes up into position. I'm going to pull the cord through so it's held in place. That gets the microwave up where it goes. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the mounting brackets or mounting bolts down through the top. So we're gonna take the bolt and put the washer on it. We can set this one up top here. Make sure you got your other one ready to go as well. Washer and bolt together. So I'm gonna take and find one screw hole. And I've got them pretty well on. I can tighten this one down. I can get it hand tight. You notice I'm just holding it up with one hand. It, it isn't that heavy once it's hanging on its bracket. Get that hung there. Tighten that one down, just hand tight. Find my second one. The microwave's not gonna go anywhere. With it in place, just take your drill and we're gonna tighten those down. Once they're tightened in position, the microwave is now mounted. You're also now, with it being installed, gonna go ahead and put your turntable and the rollers back in position and test your microwave. That right there completes the installation of the over the range microwave. Thank you for watching another quality repair video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.